Welcome to the Third Planet Podcast. I'm Brandon Makata, along with Danny. You never just <laughs> I know, I never give myself a title. I have all right, fine. Editor in chief of Third Planet from the Black Hole, you know, or otherwise known as the head honcho, Danny. <laughs> exactly. And uh I mean, I guess contributing writer when I do write for the site. Uh, what was it? Managing editor. You're managing editor yeah, when you do go. when you do manage it. when you do manage and edit for the site. You're managing editor. There we go. <laughs> Life's been a little crazy lately, but yeah. uh, t- today's episode for the podcast, we're just kind of doing something casual, right? Something, I guess, not comic book related. You could say really, or movie related. Yeah. No, we. Uh, that's mainly what we talk about here is movies and comics. We don't get to talk about video games that often as as much as i would like to so yeah and i think ever since you and i started like hanging out again you've played more video games for sure yes and (laughs) my credit card hates you for it oh yeah (laughs) that's what it's there for obviously yeah you want but no like we want to be we want to just talk about what we've been playing you know the pen the summer i guess you could say summer is pretty much on its way out and we're heading to fall it's not and it's you know it's not coming anytime soon but we're pretty much on our way there yeah and uh like all summer breaks it's not like we're in school anymore but you know you end up playing a lot of video games yeah i think that was the thing that was weird for me though was i kind of found myself playing almost just like one game the entirety from like may to august and what game was that mass effect legendary edition i did play some other stuff it's a great game to kick this off with because that game has ruined my entire i planned on having like reviews for like bio mutant and a couple other games up on the site uh recently but mass effect legendary edition has been eating up my life since the day it came out well and i'm not well, necessarily mad about that though because i've been like da- been enjoying it yeah it's damn good sci-fi but the other yeah. thing to consider is it is three games yeah yeah so you know, I did a complete run through. I got every single achievement. I did a, a Paragon, Shepard. You that are was... such a madman. <laughs> what can I say? I love Mass Effect. Uh, but uh, yeah, I did. I did a complete playthrough. I did. I you know, I don't think I did a hundred hundred percent, but I got every single achievement. I did every side quest literally available to me that I could find. Um, I bought like every armor in mass effect 2 every weapon in mass effect 2 i upgraded everything and you know like i i did a a solid run through i think the first game was about 30 hours uh the second game i did about 70 hours and the third game i did another i want to say 70 hours or so uh but i did a pretty comprehensive run through yeah it's a so i i was always mass effect was always that those games that i was just like yeah i'll play those eventually because like i i do that with everything with movies with comics with all that i'm just like yeah i'll get to that eventually and then that eventually just never comes but you know when i heard that they were doing the remastered editions of the game i was just like you know what i think that it's time to finally sit down and and play mass effect because you know i've was reading like interviews with the creator and everything he said that he was you know heavily influenced by like star trek 2 wrath of khan star wars and like all of these great sci-fi things because i'm a huge sci-fi nut that that i love so i was just like those are great elements to make a video game and i've always been waiting for that one star trek video game that really like you know gets the the universe right and the space exploration the feeling that you have a command of a ship and everything and a crew mm. and it seems like this is the I, i'm halfway through i think i'm about half a little over halfway through the second game and then this is so far the closest thing i've ever gotten i think we've ever gotten to like a star trek game like that yeah and you know what's interesting is that this is your first time playing the trilogy correct so, it is so don't spoil anything for me i i won't spoil anything uh we'll keep it spoiler free uh, this is actually my second go around with the entire series. So I played each game on release. Um, I played Mass Effect 1 when it came out, literally maybe about a month or so after. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Mass Effect 2 I got when it came out. Mass Effect 3 got, you know, pre-ordered and all that. And 
it's interesting because the first time around, I think I've played Mass Effect 1 on 360 at least three or four times. It, and then, oh, what were you going to say? Mass Effect 1 definitely feels a lot like, you know how like Assassin's Creed 2 is like a classic on the 360? Like it's, that's one of everybody's favorite Assassin's Creed games. Yeah, because game. compared to 1, it was it was way better yeah and that's how i feel about mass effect 2 because i'm like oh, oh dude, what 100%. a step up mass effect yeah. 1 is definitely more rpg than shooter and uh you know if you've played bioware games before mainly knights of the old republic or jade empire it has uh -huh. a similar feeling not too combat heavy but a lot more you know rpg mechanics and they're all rpgs at their core it's just <laughs> The RPG elements are definitely what I like the most yeah. about these games. Oh, and of course. It's the story and the characters because, like, even with Mass Effect 2, I'm not a fan of, like, the actual gameplay. I think it's pretty repetitive and it's kind of clunky. But the story and the characters are so good that that's what really keeps me drawn yeah. in and wanting to keep going. Because, like, the gameplay is just, like, there's lots of things in cutscenes where I'm just like, that would have been cool to play through. But instead, mm -hmm. I'm watching it in a cutscene. Well, the thing with Mass Effect 2 is that, you know, it was a major step forward for the series. Uh, and then when you play Mass Effect 3, the gameplay is way better. You're like, oh, my God, I wish all the games played like this. Uh, I, I, I've always said Mass Effect 2 is probably the best in the trilogy, but gameplay wise, 3 is way better. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm hearing. But um, so, yeah, like I was saying, I, you know, I have played Mass Effect 1 you know, a couple times on 360. I played Mass Effect 2 at least three times on 360. I did a Paragon run through. I think I did a Renegade run through. And then I did an Insanity run through where I just kind of like tried to finish the game as fast as possible. And then Mass Effect 3, I only played once on 360. And at the time it had multiplayer and you had to, there's this thing called galactic readiness to get like a better ending. Mm -hmm. That's the most I'll say. And you had to play multiplayer in order to increase that rating. Mm -hmm. So I remember investing a lot of time in the multiplayer because the achievement hunter I am, I was like, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do everything I can in this game. And, you know, after playing all three games, once they were all out, I, I really loved Mass Effect. I got to the point where I read the books mm -hmm. I've read the first three books. I'm still trying to get through the fourth one. I've read the comics. I've watched the movie. <laughs> It's a cool uh, universe. Yeah. And I even have the Cards Against Humanity. Like, There's a Cards little... Against Humanity version of Mass Effect? Yeah, it's on my Instagram when I posted like a little Mass Effect appreciation. And why haven't we ever played this? I haven't even opened it, honestly. Oh, my it's... God. Like, All right, Card, card Against Humanity night at your place. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the ending, though, because I made like a post in the Reddit community where I was just like, guys, I, I remember that's how I found out about Mass Effect. Was people getting pissed off? Was people getting pissed off of the third one's ending? And I still don't know how it ends. You know, I, but I, uh, I made a post in the, in the Mass Effect Reddit. I was just like, you know, hey, you know, without, I'm, without any spoilers, like, are people still mad about the Mass Effect 3 ending? You know, since Legendary Edition came out, or like, has that gone away? And everyone was pretty much just like, it mass effect legendary edition was great you know because we got to relive all of mass effect but it just reminded us of how much we hate the ending yeah the third and the ending see the problem with the ending is that first and foremost if you read a lot of documents and watch a lot of interviews there's all this talk about how ea got involved because you know ea is one of those major companies that exactly likes to destroy franchise ruin everything fun god i i almost don't want to play the dead space remake because i'm so angry we, not, we never got dead space 4 but with mass effect they cut a bunch of content they altered a lot of things they added multiplayer when they didn't want to really add multiplayer and there's all that stuff um that always but, backfires when they try to like force multiplayer into story-based games because People are assholes. They're not yeah, going to well, make it fun for you to play. The multiplayer was co-op. It was like a wave-based horde mode. And I personally think if they added what they originally wanted to add and then add the multiplayer as like a bonus, like maybe mm -hmm. another another team under Bioware or under EA develops it and they just add on like a $10 add-on or something. Yeah. I would have been fine with that because it was a nice little distraction. But anyways, what I've always said though is that when it comes to Mass Effect, it was all about the journey and not the, you know, the destination. 
And exactly. don't get me wrong, I'm not protecting the game. As much as I love Mass Effect, literally probably my favorite sci-fi series of anything ever, I will I will still stand here and say they're not perfect. And the ending definitely can piss you off, but time has passed. I was I was literally 19 at the time. And you know, I'm going on 30. And also with my, you know, with the education of like creative writing and you know, you know how it goes. Like you, yeah. you learn to appreciate stories or hate stories more. And coming back to Mass Effect, it was like this weird sensation of like happiness. I don't know how to explain it. Like it was like, man, I fucking nostalgia. Yeah, it was a hundred percent nostalgia. And but the thing was, I know the games aren't played perfectly. I know the games don't have the perfect mechanics, but it was just, you know, the characters in the world is so hard not to be in love with. Like, yeah, no, I, I definitely can see that. Like, cause it sucked me in right away. Cause it, it's hard getting into a new fandom. That's why like anime yeah. is something that I tend to stay away from. Cause I'm just like, I'm already into, you know, Star Trek, Godzilla, comic books, Star Wars. And- yeah. I've kind of grown out of Star Wars. I'm not a, <laughs> not really into star wars like i used to be but like it's hard you know being a fan of like so many things so like i was almost dreading getting into mass effect but that codex let me tell you really Dude, helps you. and they narrate the codex exactly yeah. and it's just like you feel the thought and the love that these people put into building this oh. universe of writers until that like you know they've read all the classics they've read that they're that they're sci-fi fans oh dude and not just that it's like it's sci-fi in my opinion you know i'm a huge sci-fi and fantasy nerd you know of course too but like in my opinion mass effect does sci-fi like almost perfectly everything yeah. about it it's not dystopian i you know how you said you hate evil superman as like a cop-out kind of like dc story yeah because it's lazy I, I cannot stand like everything always being dystopian in future yeah or like cyberpunk like aesthetic like that's cool don't get me wrong those stories are important and they could be awesome but every time we see a future, it's just all fucked up and just like, you know, like technology ruined everything. We're living in like a cyberpunk dystopian future right now. <laughs> it's just like we don't need to see that in media. But like, you know what I mean? It's always the go to. Yeah. And again, exactly. It, it, yeah. I've always work. been upset about that. But like you look at Mass Effect and it's like this fully fleshed out world and like humanity. It's what it does this one thing that most sci-fi doesn't do where humanity is like new in the galaxy. Yeah. Like the i think uh, i think you've heard about the first contact war in mass effect right yeah i think yeah. so yeah that yeah, was yeah. like that was like within like uh ashley's grandparents lifetime yeah when they when they went to war with the turians like the humans and turians fighting each other so it's like you know it's such like a fresh take and like humanity is still learning and this whole idea of like a collective of a council that's kind of like you know they're corrupt politicians still yeah you know society isn't necessarily like completely in shambles granted you have like the genophage and other stuff going on like space pirates of course and the genophage thing is funny because my sister like sat there and watched me play mass effect a little bit and like i explained to her the whole genophage thing with like the tour the solarians and the 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 krogans yeah my sister was completely on the krogan side she goes yeah that's messed up what they did to them that's the thing like it does sci-fi here's the thing that like i feel like fiction needs to do i think fiction needs to just throw you in the world you can yes. introduce the world but sometimes you just need, and you know this doesn't always have to be the case but i love it when you can just be dropped in and you learn everything Thro- like throw organically people into a point where it's like it's in the world but it's not like everything and you let it grow from there like yeah it's you, know, you don't need to start at like out. zero exactly you know Shepard is already at the peak of their career. Yeah. Uh, Shepard's not necessarily a commander yet, but they are like, I forget what you start off as, but you're you're like some sort of like main, you know, you're a N7 soldier, the highest ranking military officer in like a for like combat, basically. Yeah. This actually and, brings up a good point about another game that I'm playing right now that we'll talk about in a, in a little bit, the Batman Arkham games and why they're so good. Yeah. And we'll we'll talk about that. And it's just like you you're thrown in the world, but it doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't go the codex is there to blatantly explain everything, but you could learn almost everything by just navigating the world of mass and talking to people. And talking to people. Yeah. And that's the best thing about sci-fi, you need good exposition and people that are like interesting to listen to. And this game gets it. And 
you know that's why i was calling it like the closest thing that we've had like i was calling it the star star trek game i've always wanted because star trek is the only other sci-fi franchise that if you think about it where everything's good in the future like this is a future where it's just like you know this is what we can achieve if we got our shit together yeah you know it's not quite a utopia but it's there like you know it's Mm -hmm. humans and everybody they're all kind of equal and all that like they're not the top dogs in the galaxy like everybody's you know still figuring things out but it's like and this is what happens when people work together and it's sci-fi that backs the science i'm not like some expert but the science for me at least makes sense for most for certain things and like you know it's it's one of those things where you know it is in the future but there's still like this mystery of like the future what it could be like and all that um but in terms of you know for a game i think the gameplay holds up just enough to where like it's still playable yeah um you know i definitely played out of nostalgia and i think honestly if for people who are fans of rpgs and people that you know they love of course story-driven games with tons of dialogue I think like Mass Effect does it well still. And like with the Legendary Edition, it just adds little things here and there that make it more convenient and easier to play. Yeah. So I think, oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying like, it's, this is a great point to jump on to Mass Effect if you haven't, especially since they've teased that they're doing more stuff and everything now with the franchise. Like, you know, I I watched a teaser trailer for like that. They're they're going to do a fourth game and everything. And, one of the, the comments I saw and there was just like, I wonder if Garrus is ever going to be done with his calibrations, calibrations. by the time this game. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, every time I see the guy, I'm just like, are you ever done? Like, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing joke and meme in like the Mass Effect community. And who have you romanced? Oh, that was about to ask you that. So uh, oh. this is how it went. I romanced Liara. I was female shepherd. I played as male shepherd almost every single time back in the 360 days. So I was like, I'll try the female shepherd. It's because uh, we were incels and... back then. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyways, speaking for yourself, Danny. <laughs> uh, I was like, I'll, I'll give female shepherd a, a shot. Like, I want to see what it's like, you know? And uh, I forgot that, you know, it obviously opens up different romance options. So for... The first one, I romanced Liara. The second one, I romanced Garrus and then Liara and then Garrus again. (laughs) And then the third one, I romanced, uh, I can't say her name, but another character. And then I I led Liara on a little bit, but I dumped her and then ended with Garrus. Okay. You can't really romance multiple characters, but... uh, I just kind of was like, well, let's see how far I could take these before, you know, like it locks in a certain romance option. And, and then basically I had a couple saves. So I just kind of like see like who to go with basically. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll just go with Garrus. Uh, Garrus is probably like the best character in the entire series. He is so far like the, okay. I don't care. To, I don't care if you make a fourth one. I don't care if you follow up on Andromeda. I want a spinoff prequel of what Garrus was doing in between as Mass Archangel. Effect 1 and 2. Yes, as the Archangel. That's all I want. And to play as Garrus, like, mowing down mercs around the galaxy. It'd be Omega, really. But, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Because there's all those stories about how he, like, couldn't get a hold of certain people. At least yeah. in the first one, you know. So, it could be cool. Uh, yeah. Everybody's speculating that Mass Effect 4, or if you want to call it 5, um that it's going to be a sequel or it's going to be Liara uh, based, but we'll see. I, th- I think it's probably going to depend because like, I already can, like I knew from the beginning, I was like, there's going to be an ending where Shepard dies. Like that's something that's kind of predictable to me. And you can't really, I don't want to spoil it. You'll see. All right. But so for my romance, ops, like I did a, there's some stories, you know, this has come from me as I guess as a, as a writer and everything. There are some stories where I'm just like, i feel like female like a female main character just like works so much better and like sci-fi is always one of those stories where i'm just like it's cool like just because i think you know you know we've had princess leia we have ellen ripley and like all these like really cool like badass female characters and everything so i'm just like i kind of want to do something like that so Mm -hmm. i did like i went with the female uh shepherd and i like 
made her look like a Ripley type character. And uh, the first one I romanced was Caden. Cause I'm just like, I didn't really find anybody else. And I was always just like, well, who would I go after? And I think it was already too late. Cause I already got Liara. I started romancing Caden before I got Liara. Mm-hmm. And then so far in the second game, I've kind of just been holding off because I'm just like, well, we kind of messed up just to move on from Caden that fast. And then, like, I was reading in the Reddit forums that, like, female Shepherd in the second game is, like, super flirty, even if you don't mean to be. So um, I accidentally almost romanced uh, Jacob. Yeah, that happened to me also. I had to, like, reload a save. Yeah, because like you get a shit to, and I was just like, why are you getting so much renegade points for like romancing him? Like he's not even a bad guy. And then, and then what was what was the next one I went after? And then I did I I decided to go I'm just like, well, Caden's mad at me for some reason, you know, and I I don't know why he's just like part of Cerberus. Oh yeah, that too. Uh, that's a I'm gonna backstab them the first chance I get. Like I hate that company. <laughs> So, um, so I led Liara on a little bit, but I don't think I'm probably going to romance anybody in this, in this game. I might just wait till the next one. And like, mm-hmm. another thing too, I'm just like, I would be fine. You know, what, what's Liara's species again? A uh, Asari. Asari. Of course I would be fine going after an Asari or whatever and anything, but like, as far as like going after other alien species, I'm always just like, they have to at least be a little more humanoid. I sound very xenophobic, but like I would not go after Garrus as much as I love Garrus. <laughs> so he's, he's got to look a little bit more human. I was, I was just having fun with it. I was like, my shepherd's gonna sleep with everybody, you know. Like, I'm gonna do that on my second on my second playthrough. Already plan. I'm just like everybody on this ship is getting banged. You are yeah, all I'm, gonna have some shepherd. That's why I had some like saves put aside. I was like, let me just see how like the romance turns out, and then I was like, oh okay, so you know. It was just kind of like me, just like, well, I'm just going to have fun with it. Why not, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's just pretty much what I've gone with for my romance options and everything. I didn't, I was going to, I wasn't a huge fan of the way my character turned out looking in the the first game. And then, like, when they imported her model over, it looked horrid. I was like, oh, my God, that looks awful. So I uh, I just ended up changing the way she looks, but I'll probably keep it for the third game. Yeah, you'll find out when you play the third game. A lot of things are different, but it's an interesting experience. Yeah, but, I uh, wish that they would have let you like tweak the model you already had instead of having to start mm-hmm. from scratch. That yeah. was a thing that I wish. It, given the way Mass Effect 2 starts, honestly, one of the greatest intros ever to any game. Um, yeah, it would make sense that she looks different. Yeah, well, there's a certain degree of uh, the character looking a little different. But uh, overall, no, I think the series is worth trying for people that like, like you got to really into story driven games and very character driven. So, you know, I would always recommend it to people. I, I love that universe, but I kind of played it from like May, the day it came out in May to like a week or two ago. Damn. Yeah. Well, granted, I had other stuff I played, which I'll talk about, but yeah. you know, life you can't just play video games all yeah. day. You so. also have a full time job and, you know, you yeah. are co host on Apollo City Comics podcast and all that and that plug right there yeah <laughs> so yeah you but know, you should listen to after we after we finish this episode exactly yeah i um, guess they could listen to sutra side talk as well uh sutra side talk too yeah shout out to um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'd have what else have you been playing besides mass effect um i begrudgingly am starting batman arkham city again because my xbox one Oh, no, Xbox 360. I'm too Just, cheap to buy the remaster version. You you got to go with the remaster. It's like slightly better. No, because I, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way the remaster came out on this on Arkham City. I'm just like, I kind of like the old... so different. Huh? It's just like the textures and stuff like that. Like, and some of the lighting, like I like the way the old game looks better. But anyway, so I was on my way. I 100% of the first Arkham game. And I was work. I was almost to hundred percent on the second one. All I had to do was just beat those that stupid Joker's Carnival map on all three of the characters, and I would have had hundred percent. And I got hundred percent on all the the Predator, all the rest of the challenge maps. It 
God freaking damn it, man. My hard drive got corrupted oh, on no. my 360 and it lost it. I was so mad. You didn't save it to the cloud? No, because I saved the cloud. For, I don't I didn't even know how to use the cloud at the time. Okay, fair enough. So that was my own stupid mistake. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm still so mad about that. All that work, all those hours, all that Mountain Dew that I drank just sitting there all day. And like, I could have been spending time with my family or like my friends instead of, you know, playing playing that game. And all those hours are gone. So now I got to start all over again. And I'm doing like all those Riddler challenges all over again. And it is just... I love the game. I love it so much, but I wanted to be at the point where I can go back and replay it and mm-hmm. not have to worry about doing everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm playing it on hard mode this time. Oh, you never did before. I only played it on normal. I played the first one on hard mode and that was all right. But this one's like, it's so easy to fall out of free, free, uh, free flow combat. Because like, mm-hmm. if you just point the stick slightly the wrong way, it throws everything off. Like it's really, really touchy this game yeah wait till you play arkham knight where like they add even more variances to the combat yeah i've I've heard from the the arkham community that like arkham city out of all of them like even though arkham knight's got like way more stuff like it's still way easier to like 100 percent compared to arkham city arkham knight's just different i still think it's a good game again minus the ending i think it's worth trying out and like yeah you know dive. a lot of video game franchises just really don't know how to wrap up that ending do they it's it's hard man like you know video uh, games aren't easy to make first of all and yeah. you know to make a to flesh out a story that's like 50 100 hours you know yeah like, but yeah it, you would think that someone would get the ending right but i guess especially not. for a batman game but that's something I really wanted to point out about the I going back to comics here, but like I think the Arkham games are some of the best Batman stories we've ever gotten, at least the first two. Mm-hmm. Because you know, this is the thing with like the Batman live action movies, we keep getting the same stories adapted over and over again. It's yeah. year one, long Halloween, and a few others. You know, that's why I actually don't think the Dark Knight Rises is all that bad. Because like at least it did a it did Nightfall and No Man's Land. Like, how often do we get those stories adapted? Yeah, it, it just wasn't the best. Yeah. But, uh, and that's why I like the Arkham games, because it's just like, it did what you were saying about Mass Effect. It just dropped you in this universe. Mm-hmm. This is a prime Batman. He's got Robin. He's got everybody. He's got all his technology. No, no origin story bullshit. No. And it's like, that's what, that's why those games are so fun. I'm just like, I'm, I want to see them do that more in the movies. And it's just like, you know, even with the new Batman movie that's coming out, it's just like, well, it's a long Halloween again, even though like the Dark Knight was technically the long Halloween. It's like we keep getting that story over and over again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm replaying Arkham City, trying to 100% it again. And invest all that time. Invest all that time again without my Xbox overheating. <laughs> Because it's so Xbox loud, ready to freaking explode. Yeah, it's just like at this point, it's just like just put me out of my misery. Just get, just re. It's just like it's begging me to buy it on the Xbox One. I'm just like, no. They say it could be a better experience. Uh, I don't know. Um, I was gonna say, uh, the uh, once I finished Mass Effect, uh, I kind of had this moment where I was like, what do I do now? oh yeah it's like that when besides, you finish a tv show or something you're just like now what like i know like besides the usual stuff like reading and writing and all that i was just kind of like okay what next it's because it, kinda, it becomes part of your routine yeah and then i was like well on to the next one and that's where i started like juggling games uh i've been playing a little bit of multiplayer with some stuff but right now i'm going through ghost of tsushima and a uh skyward sword what's skyward sword the Zelda game that's a remake from 2011. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one with all the motion controls. I got it on Switch. When I've never out. played a Zelda game in my life. Jesus, you're missing out, man. I know. Oh, I'm, the- Nintendo was never a part of my childhood, so I never played any. I haven't played. I played Mario Kart like once or twice, and that's about it. Uh, well, I mean. And Smash Bros. A Zelda times. games are just all about going on, you know, like an epic adventure. 
But yeah. uh, Skyward Sword is like the most divisive in the series because it was all motion control based. So a lot of people didn't really like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, so much for an adventure game. That doesn't sound like that'd be that fun. It's I enjoy it still. You know, I love Zelda. That's practically my favorite video game series ever. And you know, I'll I'm not gonna sit here and say Skyward Sword is like the greatest, but it's still fun. And coming back to it with some like certain improvements and all that it's been fun it's been a nice like experience it's always fun for me to just kind of sit down and play a zelda game you know yeah so i love it i love those kind of adventure games and i have seen some of the ones that have come out on the nintendo switch and i really want to get a switch so if i get one i probably pick up are, do you have to play them all to get the story or can you just kind of pick it up no nah, the story is a jumbled mess in terms of like everything being connected like if you were to play breath of the wild you wouldn't be that lost Okay. But with uh, Skyward Sword, it's the same thing. You wouldn't be that lost. Uh, if anything, it's like the first story in a Zelda, in the Zelda timeline. So I've been enjoying that. And then I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima because the new director's cut is coming out this, this week, actually, or soon, like in five days. And I've been kind of getting ready with that, just kind of going through the multiplayer, trying out the multiplayer mode. I didn't think that was there's a multiplayer some... mode. Yeah, they added a multiplayer mode shortly after the game's release. It's huh. called Legends, where you kind of do co-op, where you do little missions together. And you also do uh, kind of like a wave-based horde mode where you fight waves of enemies. And that's what I was doing before we did the call, because I was like trying to get it done before to, you know, we talked about it because it's really grindy. You got to like do wave after wave and do matchmaking all the time just to like get good gear so you could do the more difficult you know uh, i guess you could say challenges and there's a lot of co-op that works in that game surprisingly because you have different classes Mm -hmm. so it's been really fun it's just once you've seen a few rounds you kind of know what it offers and it kind of gets repetitive after that that makes sense yeah but with the director's cut DLC coming out, they're adding new single player content. They're adding more multiplayer legends content. So I've been kind of getting my multiplayer character ready for that. And then when the DLC comes out, I have my file ready for it. I have hundred percent of the game back when it came out. So I'm just kind of waiting for that to play it. So just doing some stuff in Ghost of Tsushima, playing some Zelda. And then I, uh, on my PC, I played a few betas. I played the Back for Blood beta, which was basically the spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. How was that? I've heard a lot about that. It was fun. You know, a lot of us in the chat, we, we played it together and we had a good time. It's just, it was in beta. And there's certain things that, you know, like still need work. Uh, for a game like that, there was, I had some issues with it. Like, they try to make ammo scarce in a game where you shoot like hundreds of zombies. And I feel like I know you can't you're do to, that. You can't do that where, yeah, it's like an apocalypse. And you're trying to survive. But if you played Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, ammo is like everywhere. And it doesn't need that realism where like ammo is scarce. You just need to be able to shoot zombies. Yeah. So, you know, you found we found ourselves in moments where it was just like, I'm running out of ammo a lot. And like it's making the game artificially difficult because you can't shoot these enemies you have to like punch them practically so we only played for one night but it was fun you know it's a fun little co-op thing and i think like when it comes out it's going to be awesome it's going to be on game pass so who cares if i buy it or not because it's on game pass so i could just play off that you know yeah that's a game pass has been a lifesaver for me with like a lot of these games. It's saved me so much money. Oh, dude, a hundred percent. And with the day one releases, I'm like, Oh, cool. And it comes out of my birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm trying to do, I, I might do a back for blood little like a uh, co-op party. Okay. But yeah. So the beta was cool. And then I'm playing the split gate beta. I don't know if you heard about that. I don't know what split gate is. Split gate is literally halo and portal combined oh that one i think we i think i did see that during e3 yeah yeah it's basically you know everything from the weapons to the way you run and the jetpack plays exactly like halo 4 practically with like a little bit of halo 5 and then it has portals just like the game portal where you shoot a portal and you go into different you know Mm -hmm. you can you can go into one come out the other if you plan it strategically you can shoot enemies through portals and like it's all multiplayer based but it's still in beta 
and they've recently gotten a, a huge resurgence of popularity and they went from like 400 players to like 200,000 in a week. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really popping off. For a beta, it's a pretty stable game. It doesn't look the greatest. It definitely looks like a small development team, but it still looks awesome. It's really vibrant and colorful and, you know, it's very stable. The frame rate stays solid. There hasn't been any, like any crashes at all. I've had zero crashes on PC. I played on Xbox and PC and it's been great. And it's been like an awesome multiplayer to play. So I've really enjoyed that. And then I feel like there's something else I'm missing. Um, oh, I played the Halo beta. Oh, yeah. How was that? I freaking love Halo. So I know you do, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Halo Christmas party. What can I say? It worked well. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, it was fun. You know, they... They changed a lot of things. It well, what happened was if Halo Infinite felt like Halo trying to do different things, and Splitgate feels like a game trying to be like Halo. Uh-huh. But with Halo Infinite, they did the smart thing, I think, where they instead of having players go against each other, they went they had you go against bots so the games will stay stable. You wouldn't have to worry about like any sort of connection issues. Okay. And you know, they changed some buttons up, which is fine. You know, everybody wants their button scheme to be like Call of Duty. And I get it on controller. It's probably like the button layout that works the best. You know, Borderlands does it, Call of Duty does it, and now Halo's doing it. Um, the new weapons are awesome. They have like grappling hooks and these crazy like plasma cannons, and you know, like all these crazy sci-fi weapons. Then they have the traditional stuff like the the BR, the assault rifle, the pistol with the scope. So it was really fun. I was shocked with how difficult it was fighting the bots. Because apparently the AI for the bots can be even more difficult. They just had them at a certain level for the beta. Yeah. So they're apparently, it's like this new like system they're trying out. And it like works really well. Huh. Yeah. So that was really fun. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was awesome. And I thought like, you know, this is exactly what Halo needed was something fresh, something new. And people are loving it. The, the fan reception, if you look at like, you know, online on like Twitter or you know reddit everybody's really loving it cool yeah, yeah. i uh halo is definitely i gotta play those those games i've only played the multiplayer um but i definitely gotta sit down and play the story again like it's another thing i i really gotta dedicate some time to um what other games have i been i've been playing lego batman the original one because it was free with xbox gold my my sister and i always like playing the lego games together it's definitely not one of the funner the better ones i think uh sometimes it can feel a little bit repetitive and everything but it's still pretty fun like i think the you know the lego games have had like way better like i think the lego indiana jones game like the first one is like way better Mm -hmm. but uh this one's pretty fun and uh you know, I know that the I've played some of the sequel too, and that's really fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to the new Lego Star Wars game, the remake that's coming out. I just, oh, yeah. I Skywalker hate the voice Saga. acting in the new games. I was just like, I, I miss the grunts. They just added like clips from the movie, basically. I know it's so it's so bad. Yeah. But uh, what else is there? Let me check my list. Oh, I've been playing Grim Fandango because that's on. Yeah, game Pass. that's like a modern day classic, like or not modern day classic, but you know, at this point, it's like over 20 years old. Yeah, it's uh, I I miss point and click games like that. They really don't make them that way anymore. No, yeah. and that was the thing. Grim Fandango was like this own little niche that, like, you know, no one really had anything else out like that. I know, and it's 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 sad that it didn't get the attention it deserved to make a, to warrant a sequel because, like, the. Uh, the developer of the game like or the original director was saying he'd love to do like a, a free roam like a like a f- whole free roam city mm-hmm. or whatever or a sequel I'm like that would be great because i'm really enjoying this universe and the story and everything and like i those kind of adventure games i think really need to make a comeback because i think the closest thing we've had to that is the telltale games but even then they're they don't have that same kind of you know feel telltale, i guess they they're fun but they're their own thing for sure yeah because i played a good amount of them and they all kind of play the same you know yeah but uh and then i've also played some of the ascent i gotta i gotta get back on that so i can do my my review on that so far it's it's pretty fun i like the art direction and 
and everything. I could tell that there's been a huge wave of cyberpunk games to ride the wave of uh, another cyberpunk game that shall remain nameless. I never finished it. I started it and it just kind of was like, okay, 16 hours later, why am I still playing this? Yeah, I'll, I'll play it again because it was like 70 bucks. I'll play it again when they release like all the DLCs and the updates and like the game's like completely done. I mean, I know it's never going to be the game that we saw in that demo, but I'll replay it. They claim like this is the condition the game they wanted to release in. (laughs) That's pretty sad for a studio that gave like, you know, I've heard nothing but good things about The Witcher and there are other games and I've The Witcher is a game that I definitely do want to try someday and you know, that's pretty sad. <laughs> that's called cowing down to the investors, guys. Well, but, uh, and, you know, we're almost a year in, you know, post Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, it's just, it's we'll kicking see. a dead horse at this point. Yeah, exactly. But I, mean, uh, I don't know. But back to the ascent, pretty fun so far. I, I, uh, it's the first time I've ever played like a stick shooter. So I really got to get used to that. Those are fun. I mean, uh, I've played stuff like Gauntlet. And you know, uh, a little bit of like the stick shooter Halo games, they're called like mm-hmm. Spartan Assault or something. Uh, those are fun too. But uh, I did, I tried Ascent for like five minutes, I was like, this is cool. And then, like, the multiplayer apparently wasn't working, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna stop playing this. I die so much that I never, I wasn't even going to bother with the, cause it's such a big learning curve for me. I'm like, I'm not going to put somebody else through this, but uh, yeah. What else are game? I have my game list up here. Um, Twitch streamer, Dr. DJ funk, uh, the living primate himself uh, got me into sea of thieves. And uh, I haven't played it cause I had taken a, had to take a couple weeks off of streaming, but uh, I was playing that. And uh, it's pretty, it's pretty fun when you got people to play with. It's fun when you like everybody's doing their job. Yeah, like which is not me. I just go up and hide, hide up in the crow's nest the whole time and don't do anything. <laughs> sea of Thieves, like it's I, I did not like that game when it first came out. It's I don't think anybody long, did. It's like come a long way, man. Yeah, uh, that's a it's um. It's definitely something that I, I I've really enjoyed playing because I have a, a group of people to play with. And it's it's I think it's kind of a good thing for kids, honestly, to kind of have a game where you have to to do that kind of teamwork to keep this ship running. Mm-hmm. And you have it you actually have to use the compass in the game and and all that and and communicate with each other. I think that's that's a cool thing for like younger kids to to play you know in a video game and everything and i i've enjoyed it you know as an adult and i yeah i need to get back to playing that with uh with everybody mm. yeah i i've been playing some multiplayer stuff but i've just been working through single player so much yeah and i then, uh, i got way too many multiplayer games going on at the same time yeah that's my rule i don't i don't invest into too many uh, but uh the other one i started was man eater have you heard of that one Oh, the shark game? Yeah, it's on Game Pass. So I was like, all right, let me try it. It's, it's on fun. my list. That's a it's game so I all get to. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. And it's so, like, it's, like, ridiculously fun. Yeah. Because, like, like, I'm shocked. If you guys remember, there was a, a PS2 Jaws game that was like that called Jaws Unleashed. About, like, where you play as a shark. And it was, like, that same kind of thing. And this is pretty much, like, you know, a spiritual successor to that. And it's just, like, Except it's you great. From, like, a, a small baby shark to, like, a megalodon yeah and i was just like i'm so happy that like the, we got another game like that um i still play star wars battlefront 2 both the new one and the original one because i like the original one because like you can mod it and everything there's like a lot of cool mods and there's still a big a really active online community that play that game the servers are still running for that game they're private servers they um. people like uh the fans pretty much took it over because the first thing ea did when they took over star wars for video games was shut down the servers for star wars battlefront 2 it's like that's a great way to kick off your new ownership of star wars because there are still hundreds of people still playing that game on the pc people like that shit man yeah so uh that's fun to that's pretty fun it's uh I forgot how much better it is to play a shooter uh, FPS on the PC 
rather than mm. oh yeah that's always playing on the better. console like that's why i like that's one of the reasons i suck so much at call of duty black ops it's just like it i try to aim and my gun just goes like all over the place and everything like it's it's hard with a controller i adapt to both you know depending on how, you know, my mood i'll sometimes just use a controller because I, I don't know i don't feel like hunching over on a keyboard yeah i get that but uh yeah so yeah i've been playing call of duty black ops too that's that's fun it's uh I like it because it's nice that to have a quick match because I've I've always been a battlefield guy and battlefield matches always take so long. Battlefield um, takes like forty minutes around. I know, yeah. Um, I was playing Battlefield Three still because I refused to play anything new, but mods kill that. It's like dealing with a bunch of Reddit mods on that game. Like you make one mistake and you're banned from the server. Mm-hmm. Like you use a claymore when they say not to. It's it's really stupid. So. You know that well, game. We'll see how it goes with the new one. I'm excited for it. Are you gonna play it? Yeah, I'm gonna play it. I don't think I'm gonna buy it immediately because I don't want to spend the money on it. But I'll check it out at some point. I've played all the battle front. No, Battlefield. Yeah, I played them all. Uh, they're all the same. <laughs> they're all the same. I've done. I I do the same thing. Like I'd run through the campaign real quick, and then just play some multiplayer for a couple days, and then move on. Yeah um other than that i other what other game pass games i've been playing i'm looking on my list here there was a uh, banjo kazooie i i never played it when i was a kid They're fun. um i know I it's, back on n64 yeah because i know it's been a huge part of so many kids childhoods that had the, the n64 and everything and i was just like let me see what the hype is all about and it's fun it's a fun platform but it's it bothers me when I don't finish a game, and this is a game that I'm just like, I don't think I'm ever going to finish this. It's a little dated. It is. The controls are so, very stiff, and it's very... It's a little hard to get through. Yeah, it's a game you'd have to, like, marathon if you're going to finish it. Like, yeah. I'd much rather go back and play, like, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom before I go back and play that. That one's a little bit more new, so it has the quality of life change like you know additions yeah but uh, um, i could see where the hype would have been for a lot of people with it. Mm-hmm. yeah no it was fun back then yeah uh i've got a list right now some games i'm trying to go through i need to finish what do- uh what dogs <laughs> watch dogs 2 uh watch dogs Legion. okay write that down it. that's a movie that we're gonna write that's like a spoof of watch dogs okay what dogs, what dogs? yes what wet dogs? dogs we'll call it <laughs> wet dogs too yeah <laughs> uh watch dogs 2 which has the worst idea of what san francisco looks like first of all yeah there's no homeless people <laughs> <laughs> well the way they set up the map it's just like god it like it makes me wonder like when people see like new york and video games like do they ever get angry <laughs> Yeah, because you're, if people don't know, you're from San Francisco. So, yeah, like born and raised. So, yeah. when I saw the map, I was like, this is nothing like San Francisco. And then it got me thinking because, you know, there's a lot of cities on the East Coast that are always used in like games and, you know, movies and TV shows. I was like, how many times yeah. have you gotten stuff inaccurate there? Yeah, no, it, it does make you, it does make you think. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I got to finish Watch Dogs 2. Uh, I'm going to get Legion soon. I got to finish. I started Assassin's Creed Valhalla real quick. And I was like, I'll come back to it later. And I got to play that Persona 5. I got to finish Skyward Sword. I mean, the list is always endless. Yeah. For my, once I finish, once I probably finish uh, Mass Effect and everything, I'm, I'm going to play Bio Mutant because that's a game I, I was waiting for for a long time since I saw the first gameplay mm-hmm. video i've heard some people liked this other people thought it was just okay it was just kind of like yeah it was all right yeah it's a game that i haven't seen it get that much attention though on youtube so it's definitely a game i still want to do a it review got delayed for. and then it came out yeah pretty much I, the pandemic really screwed a lot of stuff up with that kind of stuff or yeah stuff so i mean okay video games getting screwed up by the pandemic i think are like the least of everybody's problems but um I think after that, I, I need to finish Alan Wake. That was on Game Pass, and I was almost done with it, but then they took it off of Game Pass before I could finish it. And it's uh, like 12 bucks or whatever, so I'll, I'll finish that. Um, and then you got to play American Nightmare. Yeah. Which is a short, it's a smaller game. It's like and a, then I was going to play Control after that. Oh, like, Control is awesome. Yeah, since they're all kind of... And you you gave me Control, so I, I had yeah. that sit on my shelf for a while and then i i wanted to revisit some of the uh assassin's creed games so i wanted <laughs> all like 50 million of them yeah no not that 
you know like, i'm gonna do what i did with mortal kombat where it's just like we i play like the first couple then like another one and then the new one so honestly if you played like two uh four origins odyssey valhalla i think you'd be okay oh for assassin's creed yeah well i mean yeah. one is garbage i've always thought like oh uh, like, yeah you know, i thought the first Assassin's creed was just the story was cool oh did i say assassin's creed i meant far cry oh, <laughs> oh my God. wrong ubisoft know. game um okay well, anyways, well yeah like okay I was saying the first well, yeah, with, creed... yeah i agree with you with assassin's creed i don't like the i think the second one's not worth playing through i played the full Ezio trilogy i love it those are games that i would happily go back and replay i have three because I got it for free on Game Pass. I just never played it, so I'll probably play that eventually. And then I was going to play um, Black Flag and then skip to, like, Origins. Yeah, you're not... I mean, they're all cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The, the setting and some of the characters and where it is in history, I think that's awesome. Yeah. How, I think it's really cool. Assassin's Creed is kind of like history of the game where you just play at different parts of the world. Yeah. And Especially you play... if, you're, you're a, if you're a history junkie like I am. Like, it's it is cool it's cool and yeah. like when you do stuff like the first one was really cool the stuff it did there and then two was cool and you know then you're a pirate and then next thing you know you're in ancient egypt and then you know ancient greece it, it's all awesome yeah it's just some of them have terrible gameplay that has not aged well and some of them have better gameplay now yeah but uh no, far yeah. cry <laughs> and then back to far cry um i want to play the first one it's i want right. to I heard that like you don't get it because like you can get it for cheap on the the remastered version on the 360 and oh, for the Xbox One too, but like it's very glitchy. So I I heard that like you need to get the PC version from like Steam and then you need to patch it to fix it to get it to run right because like the stealth doesn't work or whatever. So I was gonna do that. Yeah, you know, that's a game you could probably blow through in like a weekend. And then I have Far Cry Two. Because I got that one for free, never played it. I'll probably run through that. And then I also have Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, another one that I got for free, never played it. And uh, I played Far Cry 3 a couple times, so I don't need to replay that. And I'm, I don't know if I'm going to ever play 4. And I, I, I do want to check out 5. I've heard a lot of people say 5's good and New Dawn. I, but... Once you play 3, they all kind of follow that formula. I've played, I've completed every Far Cry uh yeah. minus one and two i've completed three through new dawn uh three is probably still one of the better ones four is really cool because like it's in the mountains and like i think it's in a fictional country yeah they're all like fictional countries yeah so they don't like but, insult anybody <laughs> uh yeah they might be all yeah they're all fictional countries uh but you know four they all have different settings three is kind of like the island four has like the mountains like kind of like I think they hint it's kind of in Tibet or like out around Tibet. Yeah, like Himalayas type yeah. area, that that part of the world. But it's like I, a fake country. Yeah, uh, like Far Cry Three, I think is like in somewhere in the Caribbean, like. You know. And then Five is supposed to be kind of like Montana. Yeah, I think kind of. Gee, it's like just like, but the subjects of that game make it very obvious where it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, it's like Montana, and then New Dawn is kind of like a sequel to that. Yeah. Um. So. Those I do cool. know what kind of happens at the end of five. So I'm wondering if like six is a prequel or if it's like in the same unit, even in the same universe. They, I think they're all in the same universe, but uh, five and New Dawn are cool. And then you got to also play uh, the other one, Far Cry Primal. Oh, uh, that's when I was planning on skipping, like all the little spinoffs. Well, Far Cry Primal, uh, the guy that helped create... Uh, uh, what language is that in uh, Star Trek? Um, the most Klingon? famous one. Yeah, the guy that created that language, he created the language in that game. Oh, okay. Maybe I might have to check it out then. Um, oh, yeah. So Far Cry 4 is fictional Himalayan country of Kairat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then uh, and then I also, what else do I have on my list? I have Jedi Fallen Order. I need to play that. I, I want to fun. start the Yakuza games. I want to start the Doom games too. Um, Fable 2, because I played the first one already. And then No Man's Sky. That's a game I'd, I'd like to check out. That game's like never ending. Yeah, I've heard it's gotten better. So, um, 
but yeah and then like i still never played gta 5 so it's just like i'll play that eventually too and mm. you know and uh, the outer worlds a lot of sci-fi and mystery games <clears throat> but uh yeah i've been playing a little bit of dc universe online too oh god that game yeah it's at first i thought because like i've been testing to see what my i have like my lenovo idea pad it's not a gaming laptop but it, it can handle some pretty powerful games. Like it could play Bioshock just fine. It can play um, a lot of newer games that are coming out that are like side scrollers or or whatever, or platformers. It can handle that. Um, mm-hmm. It could play the Arkham games. I've been able to play Sleeping Dogs on it and all that. So it can run some pretty big games. But it was having a really hard time running DC Universe online. And it was well, like the frame rates were dropping all the time. I was just also like, probably your internet because, you know, you got to connect all the players too. And it's got to render the whole world. That's what I thought. And then I just found out that like, it's just not well optimized to run on newer systems. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I was just like, I first, I was just like, is this me? Cause like all my other online games never frame rate drop, even though my internet kind of sucks. So yeah, like I, it's, it needs a sequel like it's a cool idea i like being able to explore the dc universe like it really needs a to be updated to a sequel though Mm -hmm. um what other games have i tried on my pc here i've uh oh i cannot minimize well that sucks um let me think bioshock seems cool um i might i might get that um i I like the art a while ago i like the art style Mm mm-hmm that's what maybe a lot of people like enjoyed about it. It looks a lot like the first Arkham game. It's the Unreal Engine, man. Yeah. Um, I am gonna try Doom though. So one of the greatest games ever. I know it's so hard. I hear I'm just like oh, I'm that game so, kicked my ass. So bad at video games, so I'm probably gonna have to put it on like the easiest setting. You should try Wolfenstein while you're at it, then. Wolfenstein? Okay, I'll try yeah. that too. You ever played Chex Quest? No, I've never played Chex Quest. Chex Quest is like pretty much a reskin version of Doom, but you're playing as a Chex guy. Like the serial. Oh my god, yeah, you really are. Yeah, so you can download the original for free. I'll send you the link and you can it's only like a six levels or whatever. And it used to come free in a pack of uh Chex cereal. That was like my first video game, actually. So we had Chex cereal. Yeah, and uh so they recently remade it too. There's an e- HD remake on uh, Steam for it. That's really, it's really fun. Let me look this up real quick. I have Steam open. Yeah, I think it's free on Steam too. So yeah, anybody check out Chex Quest. It's a, it's a fun like spoof of Doom because you get like the chain gun and everything and everything. But you're just and like the oh my god, it is. You're fighting against flemoids, so they're just like snots, like alien snots that you're blowing up. Or whatever it's it's really fun um I'm downloading it right now it is free on steam Holy yeah crap. Ch- check it out um because like i said the original one's just a straight reskin of the original doom game and then this one is like an hd remake and uh there's a few other there's another game that i was playing um god what was it called um i had to uninstall it for my pc because my pc couldn't handle it and it came out on game pass but game but only on the pc though so i can see oh, hold on let me just open up my xbox app on my pc oh boy and watch my pc is going to crash because it can't handle having zoom and this open that's at the a, same time that's a ruin this recording yep um but it was like a detective game it was almost like uh do you know black sad no Oh, it's a it's a detective game based off of a comic book, and like all the people are animals, pretty much. Can't say I know about it. No. Yeah, it's a pretty good. It's a comic book that uh that I've been wanting to check out. But uh, let me see here. So it is called. Where the hell is my list at? Sons of bitches, just show it to me. Okay. Uh, Backbone, it's called. And it's like a side scroller, um, 
like a side it's just a side scroller game that you can play and uh it's a detective thriller so never heard of this yeah it kind of flew under the radar and it's got like a really cool art style and everything and you know i love detective film noir it stuff plays animals yeah and it's like it's a little bit of an rpg too like you have to choose like you know the uh dialogue options and everything and i uh I really was enjoying it, but like my PC was like the frame rate through it's already like really pixelated and kind of jerky, but like my PC was like just having a hard time running it. So I was just like, I'll just mm -hmm. uninstall it and I'll replay it later on when I like get a a better PC. If I ever get a better PC. <laughs> it's been on my list forever. Like between that and a P I don't know if to go for like a gaming PC or a PS5 first. Yeah, whatever you feel like playing for it more, you know, if you want to play the playstation exclusives or do you just want a better pc experience yeah that's the only reason i even get a ps5 is just for the exclusives so anyone gets it for is exclusives yeah because so i still got to play the uncharted games yeah they're all on ps4 so you could definitely play them yeah and then uh the what are those games uh, about the like in the future with the animals that are like robots oh horizon horizon those are the yeah. i really wanted to check those games out it's on uh, the first one's on PC. Yeah, my PC ain't running that one. <laughs> Probably well, melt. The options there. Yeah. But, but uh, um, uh, yeah, no, the I think the list of games are always you know never ending. But yeah, right now it's gonna be a lot of Zelda and uh, Ghost of Tsushima for me. Now that Mass Effect's kind of like done for now, I'm gonna go to Andromeda again. I haven't played it since it's released. So one day I'll come back to it and maybe I won't hate it as much, but you know, I've heard we'll that it's, it's a game that got fixed over time. Like most it, EA games. It did, but that's not saying much. Yeah. I'm really worried about the future of mass effect. If the EA is like already kind of screwed up the third one a little bit with the ending, like how that's going to factor in. We'll see. There's one way they can get around it, but again, no spoilers. Yeah um but yeah i think i'm probably just i'm gonna finish uh i'll finish i'm definitely gonna finish mass effect pretty soon and then uh probably finish up alan wake since i only got like a little bit left on i'll just buy it and finish it and Chex quest and uh backbone as well uh that'll be in the future i played Chex <laughs> Chex quest was a game i played that game so many times as a little kid like i don't it's a game that's fun to revisit once in a while, but it's not something I think I need to go back and replay the whole thing again. Although I do need to finish the, the HD remake, but that'll be in the future. And then uh, Grim Fandango's is something I, you know, something I have on my laptop that I can just go around and just mm. play like once in a while when I'm away from not my stress Xbox. Over it. Yeah, it's a it's a really hard game to figure I, out where to go next because I it like 360, and then I just kind of never played it. Yeah, nothing's ever explained. I'm just like, well, I need those YouTube like seats. I'm just like, how was I supposed to figure out that I was supposed to like go up to the roof and get pigeon eggs from somewhere and like get a piece of bread to distract? Him? Like none of that is explained. Well, I I'll be first to say I have no problem looking at guides when I need them. So yeah, I'm that's alone. I've been doing that too. Like I and the sad thing is, is I've done the Riddler th stuff in the Arkham game so much that like I don't need it anymore. I've remembered nah, them all. Those are easy. Uh, some of them you're like eh, whatever i'll just look this up but yeah most of them like are pretty straightforward yeah but, but uh, um i'm looking forward to getting to doom and yakuza though because those are all on game pass you'll have a good time uh, yeah. i'm excited to finally at some point like for like the past year or two years i've been saying i'm gonna play persona and i think i'm gonna get to it what's persona about it's it's a jrpg it's i think it's from shin megami sensei I think that's Tensei. I don't know. I'm butchering that. Um, but it's like a spinoff from that. And it's just kind of like a RPG, JRPG. Cool. And apparently it's one of the greatest video games ever, but it takes like 150 hours to beat. So granted, I did just play Mass Effect for that long, but this is just one game. Yeah. There's. I really want to get into emulating more like old games that haven't been ever brought over like because there's so many old like point and click adventure games and everything from like commodore 64 pcs and everything that you can still like download for free and 
you know, get to work on a PC. So it's just like, I, I kind of want to start doing that with some of those old games just to see, you know, cause like, as long as I got a good story, you know, and my then, goal uh, is to uh, hook up, uh, I get my PS3 going and play the HD remakes of a uh, Ratchet and Clank. I never really finished them. So that's kind of like my ongoing goal is to go back, turn on the PS3 and play some Ratchet and Clank. That's one of my things why I want to do this uh, emulating because PlayStation is so bad about backwards compatibility. It's just if you can, you can get those old, like download the ISOs for those old uh, PlayStation games and then just max them out to super HD and make them look better than the remakes on your PC. If you have a powerful enough PC. I don't know, man. I, uh, I got the PS3. I'm going to try to make it work. Yeah, you already got it. So you don't need yeah. to worry about that. But uh, yeah, and then Biomutant, I'll definitely check that out. And then uh, yeah, just pretty much like a few other games. Got to finish Ascent and multiplayer you know, stuff whatever. The boys. Yeah, whatever else is coming out this year. Halo. Halo Infinite. That's a big yeah, one. Yeah, that's going to be all you because I don't, unless I sell my Xbox One to upgrade to the next to the Series X. I, uh, you can still play it on the Xbox One. Yeah. I'm probably going to – I was going to wait to get Battlefield 2142 on uh, something next-gen so that way, mm-hmm. like, I can get the – better experience. Yeah, and then, well, cross-play because cross-play – I don't think they have cross-play on the current gen. I think they will, Nat, with this one. I don't know. I have to look into it. I wasn't really, like, paying attention to Battlefield. Like, all the past, like, game shows, I just didn't really pay attention to anything. Yeah. There's so much, but so little at all the conventions lately. It's not easy to make games right now, man. Yeah, true. I know you can't crunch every game developer to death and, like, keep them working, like, no, you know, you gotta, 20 like, hours a day. They, they take time to make. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens next time we meet. But uh, hopefully by then I'll have finished uh, Ghost of Tsushima and Skyward Sword. And I can move on to the next one. The funny thing is probably by the next time we meet for the next... Uh, this is going to be a regular series, by the way. At least one episode a month of what what are we playing. Yeah, just a um, recap of like what we played yeah. and all that. Sad thing is I'll probably still be playing all the same shit. <laughs> we'll see. Next month, uh, what comes out? Nothing really. I think we're good until no- at least I'm good until, until November because yeah, that's why I'm just like I need a break just so I can catch up on everything. Uh, that's how it goes, man. Even having fun takes up time. Yeah, I've started uh, Uber driving and DoorDash again just to support my collecting habits. So I'll definitely be picking up some more video games soon. Hell yeah! Well, anywho, uh, I'm gonna get back to playing Ghost of Tsushima or maybe okay. Skyward Sword. I don't know yet. You got to get back to Mass Effect. Yeah, and Arkham City. And Arkham. <laughs> I, I could just lend you the HD remaster. I no, I need the. I need to do this game. I was so close to beating. I have to beat this certain copy that I have. This game of the year edition copy. Then you can work on Arkham Origins. Yeah, I might get that on the PC. Um, is it on PC? Yeah. Yeah, you can get it off of Steam. Um, I might get it on there if not, because like I don't feel like going and buying like a disc, a used disc, and have it. Yeah, they don't have it available whatever. anywhere else. Yeah, so I wow, might just. Wow, this is on Steam for twenty bucks. Yeah, so I figured my my PC can run Arkham City and Arkham Asylum just fine, so I should have no problem running that. I had no idea this. Yeah. Was I meet all Steam. the recommended requirements, so. And if you're listening to this, Doctor DJ Funk, I will be back for uh sea of thieves with you soon so but uh on, a, on a side note you'll never be able to get every achievement in arkham origins because Why? they shut down the servers and there's multiplayer achievements oh uh, i never cared about the achievements fair enough anywho yeah. on that note everybody check out sutra side talk check out apollo city comics podcast the pauses in between that <laughs> check out dr dj funk's twitch stream yeah and with that as always check out thirdplanet.news for yes. everything and anything i guess pop culture right uh anything nerdy geek culture yeah geek we culture, just there you go. it's just geek culture and occasionally we step outside of that um you can find our podcast on spotify google podcasts apple podcasts wherever you get your podcasts except for the places that we aren't you know 
<laughs> all major podcasting platforms and maybe some yeah maybe but some other ones i don't know I, what we're on at this point i paused so that you know people could hear me properly okay i know i know i talk way too fast <laughs> anywho but yeah thanks for being here danny and you know i'm glad we were able to just talk about video games kind of just hang out for a bit oh yeah i'm looking forward to doing this again and we're gonna have some more stuff coming up soon i promise i've been on a two-week hiatus because i've had life to deal with so i've had a couple month hiatus because life as well but yeah well you're I'm gonna fired get back because on that of horse. that <laughs> anywho thank you everybody for listening thank you danny for being here and we'll catch y'all next time later guys reporting live from the third planet from the black hole it's the astro flowing through the astro I maintain this wisdom, I'm the vassal yeah. Baby, I'm just burying these rappers like a time capsule Let my mind travel through dimensions Check this pimping, I'm just trying to find a piece like Olimar